So what we wanted to do was go through the, the Midland kit for you, but then also we'll talk about the, the training head in general so you guys can make good use of it. Uh, it's a good tool. Um, so what this thing was originally designed for, this was to represent a chlorine valve arrangement in here. Now we've customized it a little bit so you guys can get a little more usage out of it. Um, so the, the typical chlorine car arrangement here, now you've got to figure this is going to be oriented. Either the car is running this way or it's running this way, which is going to tell you which valves are which. Okay, so the valves that are down the center line of the car, so let's just for now say that the car is running this way. These two valves are going to be your liquid valves. I got the pipes that run all the way down into the liquid chlorine right down to the bottom of the car. And then the two valves off to the side are both going to be vapor valves. So they basically, that hole ends right in the top of the car to communicate with the vapor space uh, in the rail car. And then you're going to have a spring-loaded safety relief valve. So normally we always tell everybody this is just a chlorine valve arrangement. The truth is it's chlorine and sulfur dioxide. And you guys see a fair amount of sulfur dioxide going onto the barge, uh, going over to the mills on the island. So that would essentially be this same valve configuration on the SO2 cars. The only difference between the chlorine cars and the SO2 cars, most of the SO2 cars, instead of a one-inch pipe thread opening the valve, it's going to be a two inch, but otherwise everything else uh, works the same uh, and the kit works the same. So when I talked with uh, Stefan here in the past, the couple things to remember, um, if you end up with a leaky rail car and you go to one of these and it hasn't been involved in some big fiery pileup, which is probably not what you're going to get, right? You're just going to get somebody smells something, somebody walk past the car, feel sick, whatever it may be. Um, most likely it's going to be something really simple. It's usually, you know, user error. Somebody didn't button the car up right when they either loaded it or it's coming back as a residue. Same deal. Um, so you're going to have the big lid on top of this housing. First thing I know, once you get there and you know what the chemical is, you figure out what you're dealing with so you protect your people right, um, there's going to be a security seal on here. So there's going to be a big pin that goes through with a drop leg on the backside with a big cable seal on it, so a good sharp set of side cutters. Otherwise, you're going to send the people up there and they're just going to waste their time because they can't they can't get into it. Okay, so you're going to cut the security seal, pull the pin out, open the car up. Uh, at this point, depending on the size of the leak, you may be able to see what's going on. Uh, we usually have a lot of humidity, so you may be seeing a lot of visual on the vapor coming out, right? It's going to react whether it's the, the chlorine or the SO2. Uh, always do the really simple stuff first. You're not going to hurt anything. Grab every valve and make sure it's tight. Uh, you go around and do that, odds are you're going to find one that's, you know, it's probably not going to be way open, but you're going to grab it and very easily put some more on it. If it's the valves like this that don't have the four holes in there, hand tight is all you need. It's a soft seat valve and that ought to do it for you. The older chlorine and SO2 valves that have the, uh, the four holes in here, that's a straight metal to metal seat on those valves. So the stem just comes down, it's machined, a lot like a valve and a cylinder head on the car, right? So these you actually need to either put a spanner wrench in there or you can put a wrench, you know, on here and wrench it in to really drive them home. Most of the time that's going to be your fix. Um, but the thing to remember is everything's got to have two forms of closure. So the valve's got to be shut and that plug has to be wrenched in tight. So if the, the valve has rattled open or was just not all that tight to start, if the plug had been screwed in tight, uh, you still shouldn't get a leak. So what you normally find is you get two failures right away. Okay, so somebody either loaded the car, and honestly, it's usually on a car coming back um, from a, a mill somewhere. Uh, the companies that make the products tend to be really diligent in making sure that everything is tight and right. Um, so even if you, you do this uh, and the leak stops, whether you're verifying that with your air monitor or you can just visually see, you know, things are dying down right there, uh, you need to get in there with your pipe wrench and screw the plug back in and really run it home. A uh, 24 inch pipe wrench on all of those plugs is not going to hurt anything. Um, they're pretty much uh, bulletproof on that end. Um, if for some reason that doesn't get it, and I feel very honest telling you that 98% of the time that'll be your fix. It'll be just that easy. Just shut a valve. Um, if that doesn't get it, the next places that we see that these valves can leak, you'll see everything in here is bolted to the pressure plate of the car, right down here with these big, four big nuts. Okay, it's a tongue and groove gasket, so the, the pressure plate, so this part that seals the top of the car is machined with a nice groove in it, the gasket drops in there, and then there's a tongue on the bottom of the valve. 
So when these cars go in for recertification or they've pulled the valves off and put new rebuilt valves on, uh, they torque the valves, the car's pressure checked, everything is fine. Uh, but we have seen some instances where, you know, the car was reassembled in a real warm location, like California, something like that, in the winter. Still significantly warmer than it is in Edmonton, and that gasket shrinks up enough that it loses its seal. Um, so we'll go through it here when we get to it. But there will be a crow's feet wrench in the, the mid-link kit there that will let you get down onto those nuts and then tighten them up. And just like the lug nuts on your car, you know, you would crisscross around there to make sure that you suck it down, you know, nice and even onto the car. That would be the next thing that we might see. Uh, really the final easy fix that we get into is the valve stem obviously has to seal to the car. As long as the valve is making a good seal, you know, the seat of the valve makes a good seal, you'll never know if you have a packing leak when the valve is closed. But if the seat on the valve is jammed up or there's something not quite right there, the cavity in here will still fill with whatever the product is uh, and then be exposed to the packing. So this is a, a newer style chlorine valve, the soft seat. So the packing nut is just right here. You see this big squared off nut riding right on the stem there? Okay. Typically a quarter turn is all you're going to find you need there to tighten it home. So give it a quarter to a half turn as it starts to snug up. Just wait uh, and see what you get. That ought to see the Heavy with a crow's foot wrench? A uh, crow's foot, normally you can get in there with a crescent wrench or we can even go through it. Whatever you can get in there with. Uh, this guy will get in there in a lot of cases. Uh, and you may even have the box end wrench uh, that'll get in there. Uh, whatever you need, because that piece wears. You know, every time they open and close it, the back end gets worn a little bit. Uh, the older style chlorine valves that you see on the, the chlorine SO2 cars, same idea here, the packing gland is just driven down by the, the two nuts on the studs there. So just one and then the other, just tighten it down. Now, effectively, we can tighten it down, you know, assuming the packing's not totally shot. You can almost always stop that leak. Now, whether the guy who comes in behind you can actually move the valve anymore, not really our problem so much, right? We just don't want the car leaking uh, at this point. So those would be the easy fixes uh, on these valves. Uh, the valve that you, we put on this side of the car, just to give you a feel for doing some other work, is an LPG service anhydrous ammonia valve. So more or less just a two inch version of the chlorine valve here. So two inch opening, packing on these. The nut is right here, okay, so it's under the handle. Never hurts anything to take the handle off if you need it to get access. Okay, you know, just make sure you don't operate it when you're doing that and then we can tighten the nut down there. We can take all this stuff apart today if you want to see how they actually work. Um, so same idea there. Otherwise, just make sure the valve is shut, plug is wrenched in tight, uh, and then the, the studs down on the base of it. When we start getting into some of the stranger things, especially when the cars really take a big lick in a derailment, um, all the big studs that you see down inside the housing here, um, you know, the pressure plate on top of the car is probably nearly an inch and a half thick, you know, and that's what all this stuff is mounted to. If the housing takes a really big side shot in a derailment, sometimes those studs will stretch and we can end up with a leak right there at the pressure plate where it bolts to the car. Pretty few and far between, uh, but we do see it from time to time. Essentially, once you get a socket on those, get the biggest cheater bar, unless you happen to have a torque multiplier, and just get on them with all you can, and same deal crisscross pattern. Uh, we have had some cars seal back up when we did that. Others, you never really get ahead of it. Everything's just too cocked and you're not going to loosen it up to try to, uh, to get anywhere. The safety valve is on the car, obviously, to protect the car from coming apart as a hand grenade. Shouldn't ever activate if everything's right with the car. Right? So if this is a chlorine car uh, on a, a hot summer day, you might get 125, 130 PSI inside that car. The safety valve on the chlorine car is set to go 375 PSI. Okay, so there's a really big safety margin. Short of the car really sitting in a pool fire and just cooking, we don't ever expect that to go off. But if you've done everything else and you're still looking for the leak, uh, there is potential for mechanical failure in here or it could be leaking where it seals to the base of the car as well. Um, what do you guys, you said you, you work with the A-Kit, right? What do you know about identifying where the leak's coming from on a, a chlorine car? Do you guys have any tricks for that? Well, we've got some ammonia mm -hmm. and uh, Q-tips. Okay, yeah, so the ammonia and Q-tip deal works really well. All right, so, you know, it's very possible that you can get a leak that's really not even 
We haven't gotten to the point where the concentration is even dangerous to somebody, but you can definitely smell it. Right? It smells like a pool around here, okay, that type of chlorine leak. Uh, if you get up here and you do all the easy stuff and you just can't find it, you know, you're on air, so you're not smelling it. Um, at that point, that's where the chlorine in the Q-tip comes in uh, pretty handy. What you don't want to do is just spray the ammonia vapor down in here because then you're going to get the white cloud and it just all disappears. We already knew there was a leak in here somewhere. That's why we showed up. Okay, so just start high on each valve. You know, take the Q-tip around the packing first, then down around the valve seat, around the plug, and then all the way down. And you'll see when you get to the spot, and then you at least know where you want to try uh, and work on it. Same deal with the safety valve. Uh, you could check here and then check down around the bottom to try to really identify. Uh, that works. The ammonia works just fine on sulfur dioxide as well. You get the same reaction. Well, it's not the same reaction, but the same result. You get the white puff. Um, LPG, anhydrous ammonia, just easier to use. Snoop. Just get some soapy water in there. You're not going to make acid and hurt anything, at least nothing that's aggressive enough to tear the car up to help you identify where the leak is. So questions on that end of it? You're saying 98% of the things can be just shut, by shutting these down then. Yep. And, and we rectify the problem. Yep, yeah. Most of the leaks I go to, uh, yep. that's, that's the fix. Do that, yep. wrench a plug in, take some pictures, send the bill to the customer. Sorry, boys. What's that bill with? Uh, the bill for CN, and I think BNSF is on the same plan. Leaky dangerous goods rail car, uh, as long as we didn't do something to the car, uh, is 5,000 bucks plus time and material. So the intent is to really motivate them to make sure everything is right every time. Then, then the federal government will come in and do the same thing to them. So it's a very painful process for them. Uh, and that's the same whether it's chlorine or diesel fuel. You know, we want all our, all our customers lined up. Okay, other questions there? We'll get into taking pressures and doing some of the other stuff, and then we'll go to the kit after that. Okay, um, you know, a couple other things you should suspect. Uh, if you have a monster leak coming out of the car, I mean, it's going to have to be pretty cold to actually see free liquid coming out of the car because as soon as it gets out past the plug, it's going to boil off and get your big vapor cloud. Um, but if you really have a pretty monster vapor cloud, you can pretty much narrow down right away that you're probably going to go to a liquid line because you got that big expansion ratio. Even if it's just weeping out past the plug there, uh, once it gets free of the plug, it's going to boil off and your cloud's going to be a lot bigger. Or something off of the vapor valve, short of, I mean, the thing just absolutely being open. Uh, it's probably going to be a wispier kind of leak. All right. Um, so those are the simple fixes that we get to on the cars. Uh, other things that we may need to do, uh, we may be interested to take a pressure on the car. So we'll do the chlorine car setup first here. So if we've gone through, there's something leaking on the car, uh, we've done checked all our easy fixes, and we just can't, can't dial in what's going on. It's not a valve. Everything seems right. Safety valve is leaking, okay? So we're discharging basically through these ports, okay? What do we really need to know about the safety valve at this point? Because the Midland kit will let us actually isolate that and seal that thing off. But before we go to that step, what do we really need to know about the car? Pressure. I need to know the pressure in the car relative to what the start to discharge pressure of this thing is, okay? The good thing is you don't have to remember what the pressure for this is. It's stenciled on the right side of the car. Okay, so it's a chlorine car, it's going to say 375 PSI. Well, if, it's, if the car's sitting at, whatever, 370 and this thing's starting to weep, you know, that makes sense, right? Uh, and I don't want to cap this because there's something else wrong with the car that's led to the pressure buildup. So we need to be able to figure out what the pressure in here is. So in the case of the chlorine car, you're going to have a couple choices. There is no sample line on a chlorine car because they've tried to make it as, you know, idiot-proof as possible and remove as many leak points as they can. So we're going to have the option of screwing into either a liquid line or a vapor line to take the pressure on the car. Which one's going to be preferred? Hmm? Vapor? Yep. Either one will work. What's the, uh, what's the upside of doing it on the vapor? Okay. Yeah, if we do it on the liquid line, once you open the valve, we're going to fill this entire cavity with liquid chlorine, you know, your gauge is going to be on the end, which is all fine and well, you'll get the same pressure you would on the vapor side, but then when it's all said and done, and you shut the valve again, it's time to take this out. Now I know I've got chlorine at 470 times to one that I have to now discharge to atmosphere and everybody's going to get real excited versus just this much vapor. Okay. So your plug will have been in the valve. Okay, you're going to wrench your plug out with the, uh, the two inch pipe wrench. Uh, 
if we're going down the line where we're thinking we're going to have to cap it, or even if we're just starting to mess with the safety valve, uh, I would not even worry about the chain. Just get the cutters out of the box or the cutters that you brought up with you to get into the housing. Just cut the chain so you can take the plug and get it out of the way, because I guarantee it's going to end up in your way at some point. And you've got your one inch stab pipe. Tape it uh, with Teflon. In we go. And let's just make sure. Which tape do you use with Teflon? Uh, what do you have here? The white should be pure Teflon, white. which is just fine. Yeah, the white's fine. The, uh, the stuff that comes in the orange package is usually a little different uh, oil and gas stuff. Uh, both will work, especially in a short term kind of deal here. Um, so then we want to make sure that we've got a pressure gauge that is going to handle the pressure that we've got in the car. So here's a 200 pound gauge. Um, we would ideally like to not use the 200 pound gauge. We're still waiting for the 600. Okay, all right, so the 600 is coming. The big deal with the, the gauge that's not up to the, uh, the pressure rating for the car is if the safety valve is right up near the pressure and you screw this gauge in, and we've done it because you know, you're know you jammed up someplace and well, the pressure shouldn't be that high, the gauge rings all the way up and then it splits because it wasn't rated for that and then we end up with another leak. Okay, so tape it all, screw it in, you know, you're going to crack the valve and all you have to do is crack it, okay? And then we're going to get our reading for what's in the car. And at that point we can start to make some kind of decision as to is the safety valve doing what it's supposed to or this thing's going to roll up to what we would expect based on the maths and gas guide or you've talked to the customer and they say, you know, there ought to be about 120 pounds in that car. Roll it up and it says 370. Mm -hmm. Okay. More than likely what you're going to see is the car's going to roll up the pressure that we're expecting. So it's going to say 120 PSI. We checked everything else. Safety valve is leaking for some reason. Okay, we've had mechanical failure. They've got some moisture inside the chlorine car. It's made acid and it's eating the valve. Okay. Once we can really establish that that's what's going on, now we can make the step to start thinking, well, is the best option now to cap that safety valve? Okay, if we cap the safety valve, the only way the car has any pressure relief now uh, is us. We have to mechanically do something to let pressure off the car. Uh, but there's no reason for the car to build any more pressure than what we expect. If everything else is right based on what we see here, the car's not flame impinged, talk to the shipper, everything else seems square, then we would go to putting the capping kit on. And you said, uh, Lee, these are discs, or these are... Uh, what you've got here, so the chlorine is a, a unique animal. There's actually a, there's a rupture disc on the bottom of it right. that's at 375, and then there's a spring-loaded setup above that that's 360, uh, because they're always worried about the chlorine eating the spring and then causing it to discharge at the wrong pressure. Okay, so what typically happens is the disc will break or get eaten through, okay, and then the spring-loaded valve will, will start to leak at that point. And, you know, we run through all this, very low probability that that comes. I have yet to have to cap a, a chlorine valve. <coughs> sulfur dioxide is the same with a disc? Or What's that? Sulfur dioxide is similar with a disc? SO2 doesn't have the disc. Okay. It, it has a similar type safety valve right. or it can have the shorty LPG valve, okay. but the spring is exposed to the, uh, the SO2. Right. Sulfur dioxide is not nearly as aggressive as the chlorine. Okay, so that would lead us to the, the step where we might cap the safety valve. So. Let's go ahead and we'll do the, uh, the safety valve cap here first, I think. So you've got the Midland kit here now. And this is where the whole, you know, hazmat can't be hurt. We've got a lot of parts to deal with. The Midland kit's a fantastic tool, but it's a giant erector set, right? I mean, there's a bunch of stuff we got to figure out. So what we know for sure, we got to find the right can. Usually the easiest way to do that for the guys who are going up the car uh, send them up with the gaskets instead of dragging all that stuff up right? and let them get in here and drop the gasket in until they find the one that is going to fit. Okay, and hopefully our LPG valve doesn't mess us up here. Okay, so that gasket looks like that's going to work for the can that we want to set in there. And this is going to take a couple, uh, couple entries to get the guys through. Uh, at that point, you're going to want to make sure that the pressure plate is clean. Okay, so there's a scraper in the kit, there's a wire brush in there. If it's not fairly smooth, you know, the gasket's fairly thick, it'll take up some anomalies, but it's still going to have to be pretty clean in order to work. Uh, so once we get that, we find the corresponding can. The gaskets always fight you, especially when some guy's filming you. And 
it's really not a bad idea to either duct tape or chem tape the gasket on the outside because as soon as the guy gets up here and they're on air and they got chem gloves on and everything else, as soon as you flip it over, it wants to fall down, then they're up there trying to fight the gasket back on. And that's always going to be an issue for you. So before you get up there, the other things you need to kind of have ready. Uh, so we've got our, our two inch opening in the end of the can that we're obviously, obviously going to have to seal up. We're going to have to look at the orientation in here where the can best fits. So, you know, where we want our discharge coming off. We got our 90, our ball valve, and we should have a close nipple here. So again, all this stuff's got to get assembled on site because you never know exactly which one you're going to be getting into. No. You turn the camera off. <laughs> uh, I've not done a response in an A suit. Have not found the need. Chlorine, ammonia, SO2. Uh, I avoid the A suit like the flake. So what have, what have you been wearing? Hmm? Uh, splash suit and an air pack usually. Sometimes Nomex and an air pack. Sometimes an APR. And you know, look what we're wearing now. Depends on what we're seeing. And I certainly can't dictate your PPE policy to you. Right, so once we get the, the fitting all assembled, the, the thing that's going to be key here, the valve's going to have to be open when you install the can on the car. Okay, because as soon as you set that down on there, all right, the pressure's going to try to build inside the can and it's going to sit there and chatter on you uh, if you don't have the valve open. So let's see if it's going to fit. Oh, it's not on there. so that you can get some more use out of it. Okay, so at this point, the can's going to drop down in there. Okay, so now we've got the can in there. A couple other things to think about, depending on the fittings you have and how far into this you want to get. Um, valve is open here, depending on how bad the leak is, we're discharging whatever our vapor is here, okay? At this point, the guys who are actually up here doing the work may really appreciate you taking an extra five minutes of pipe fitting come off of this to a bar, run the product into a hose, even if we don't have a solution to scrub it and react it off into now, at least I can get it out of their face. Okay, so then they can work without an active leak right there in front of them. Now, we start to get interesting. So, we need the legs for the kit. Another set of hands. You can pull the leg up for me. <coughs> okay. So like that. Same deal on that side, guys. It'll be quite go easier for you the other way. Make sure this is screwed in so it's realistic. Yeah, bring the take the pin out. And this is where you just have to practice with this thing enough to to be familiar with it. Back the jack screw off. One guy can hold it up in the strong back. This usually works just as well. If we back it off all the way, it'll sit there a little better. Okay. Okay. So here's where you can see we're going to get into at least a two or three guy deal. You see, we've got all the, the spacers in here. Basically, that's just setting the width is equal to the legs there. So we're just going to drop this down here, but we want to get those legs vertical and then come up in between a set of spacers, typically. And I'll just watch one of those fingers. Okay. So now, we've got this other set of pins here. Pull those out. Okay. 
Now you push the legs up. Okay, and we're going to want to go to the same distance on both sides. It looks like we can probably get to the second hole, which is good. The shorter we can keep the, the strong back, the less likely it is to... Uh, I don't know. You're going to get the second one or just the first one? It's gonna be, the second's going to be real close. Okay, let's try for the second. If we can get it, cool. If not, we'll just back up and go to the first. You going to get it? No. No? Okay, let's go back to the first thing. Okay, now start running in on the jack screw. We can help him out a little bit by lifting up just a little bit so he doesn't have to fight the weight. Okay, so at that point, got your big socket. You don't have to go all absolutely crazy on it because we're going to find out if the thing seals. Okay, so now we've got everything lined up. We figure we've got everything in right. You want to try to get a visual on the can. If the legs on this thing have rocked off one side or the other, it kind of pushes laterally on the can. It doesn't want to seal up. So this all needs to be pretty vertical. Okay, at this point, shut the valve. Okay, so once the valve is shut now, we're going to build pressure in the can. After you give the can a little time to pressure up, then we can go back and do the leak check and see where we're actually at with it, uh, if we've actually sealed it off. If we've sealed it off, now we've basically, we've mitigated the emergency. We don't have an issue here, but what have we taken away from the car at this point? We've disabled the safety feature on the car. Okay, safety valve is gone, so this is where we really have to keep track of this. Now we're smart enough to understand that we don't think there's anything chemically going on inside the car. We just had a mechanical failure of the valve. But we're going to have to keep track of this because if something does start to happen or we're missing some piece of the puzzle, the only way we can let this car relieve is through there. Okay, That's still an option, but now we have to watch it to take care of that. So at this point, you know, this car is probably not going anywhere like this unless destination was right around the corner and Transport Canada and the railroad and the fire department all agree that, yeah, it's better, we'll just, we got the kit on, we'll follow the car, we'll take it down, hook it up at the facility and unload it. It's probably going to turn into a field transfer into another tank car or trucks at that point. Get all the liquid out of the car, get all the vapor out of the car, clean it so we can pull the capping kit off and then take it back down to the tank car shop uh, and pull it all apart and figure out what happened. Um, but we can still hook up and unload this car. That's why these legs are all recessed like that, machined, so you can still get in there and get access to the valves in the portholes where, you, uh, where you've capped it. So we still do have access to everything in the car. Uh, questions on this setup? How many guys do you do this with? It's usually two or three up on the car. Uh, but the very best deal is go up and really figure out what's wrong with the car and build as much of it as humanly possible in, you know, level D down on the tailgate of the truck. Uh, and then just take the pieces up one piece at a time and just understand, you know, it's a big erector set. I gotta do A, then I gotta do B, then I gotta do C. Um, so the guys up on top of the car on air and in the suit, you know, aren't trying to put all this stuff together. So form a plan like, on the ground then. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and you know, it's, it's an invaluable tool. But uh, I don't know. when you need it, you have to have it. But it's like anything else in emergency response. Most of the time, you don't ever need it. Uh, but if you don't practice with it, you know, there are a lot of moving parts here. Uh, it's 100 times more difficult to put it together when you need it. Are there any major differences if you're capping a liquid or a vapor line? Nope, but we'll go ahead and do those as well. It's all exactly the same, uh, exactly the same thing we got going on here. OK, your brass here. Uh, which you, it'll be good for a little while, but that's it's going to eat that up and leak. So you're better off to find a stainless through and through. Okay. Um, you know that'll probably last a day, so it may be fine for your application. But just know you're going to have a, a reaction there. Okay. Chlorine or the SO2 is going to eat it up. Okay. So let's do this the uh, the opposite way. Let's say we've uh, when you're ready to. I'm ready. Okay. Let's go ahead. Um, I'm just dealing with the valve thing. Yep. No problem. Okay. Um, so let's change this up. Um, so 
we said again, these could be liquid or vapor, depending on which direction the car actually sits here. So what we'll do is we'll cap, uh, let's call this a vapor valve this time. All right? So we've come up here, we've tried to tighten the valve, I, I shut the valve, I wrench the plug in, I tighten the packing, uh, I tighten the nuts. Where you typically find this is we tighten the nuts down that hold the valve to the pressure plate of the car. Uh, and I can't get it to stop leaking. I still have, you know, I get my Q-tip down there, or I got a big leak. It just won't won't seal up for us. Okay, so we're going to go through all the same steps here. Um, I really, I'm going to want to put a pressure gauge on the car, even if I'm not doing the safety valve. I still want to know what the pressure in the car is, because that's really my only indication on these as to what's actually happening inside the car. So same deal as we did before. We got to wrench one of the plugs out. This time we're going to take the plug off of the liquid valve there since we're going to call that a vapor for this exercise. No, nothing different here, right? Just tape it up and screw it in. And just for the instructors, these were the fake valves, or one of the fake valves that we got. So they, they don't actually, the wheels don't actually come off and they're sized incorrectly and they're a yeah. real pain in the ass. So if you're actually doing a capping exercise, don't do it on these aluminum ones. Do it on the, yeah, on this the real is a, valve. Uh, it's a chlorine that's valve that's been taken out of us. Okay, so we get the pressure gauge in there, we open the valve, everything looks, you know, right where we want it, okay? So the things we gotta keep in mind now, and this is the part that usually starts bothering everybody. Uh, the only way that the cap is gonna fit over the liquid valve is the plug has to come out. Okay, so we already have a problem with the car, it's leaking, and now you have to disassemble the car a little bit to put the capping kit on. It's what you have to do, just make sure we take all the steps, okay? So again, make sure that valve is tight, you're going to wrench this plug out. Go ahead and cut the chain. Get it out of there because that chain's going to want to hang or the plug's going to fall in there and keep our cap from going where we need it to. Next thing we're going to need to do, the handle has to come off for the cap to clear. Pull the handle off and get it out there. Okay, at this point, we're basically at the same place we were with the other one. Okay, verify the gasket fits. Okay, so again, it's a whole lot easier to carry your gaskets up here in your race suit than the cans up and fight those. So we look, yep, that's gonna be our gasket. Pull it back out of here. Come back down to the truck. So does that gasket actually have a number three on it? Uh, not that I've ever seen. No, it's stamped with uh, material construction. Um, get it assembled. We've got the same inspection port here. And we need, in this case, they give you a little needle valve to screw in here. Wrench the needle valve in. Again, make sure it's open or it's just going to fight you when you try to put it together. Cap's going to come up and drop on. Uh, make sure you orient this needle valve in such a place that you can get to it because if you get it jammed up over here and then you can't shut the thing, you just shut yourself in the foot. So get it off into an area where you got some free space. Okay, now we got to go through all the same steps that we did before. So we need a set of legs in on both sides. Sir, do you want this open? Yeah, you want to leave that open because yeah. if you shut it, it's going to build a little pressure and the cap's yeah, yeah. going to sit there and chat. Yeah, and make sure you put the oh, one hole goes down to the bottom and then the multiples come up because yeah. that's your adjustment. Legs, strong back. Okay. There it is. Okay. Now, if we've got two or three guys up here, if one of the guys, two guys, lift the strung back up and let the other guy run the jack screw down in, because then he doesn't have to fight any weight while he takes up the slack. No need. You kept getting in the picture there. 
I just can't stare, stare to the camera. You want to be a, be a star? Loves me. Oh, he's a star. <laughs> okay. So what's left at this point? Everything should be secure, but what do we have to do to finish the job? Got to close her up. Mm -hmm. Close up the plug. Okay, so if everything went perfect now, again, we stopped the leak, life is good, we'll make, uh, you know, the railroad, the carrier, the car owner, we'll make arrangements to get the, uh, the car offloaded or degassed here. There will be occasions either the pressure plate is pitted up or you just can't get the thing to seal. And again, that's where the, you know, the extra fitting here is really handy uh, because we can do some pipe fitting into that opening. And then if it's chlorine, if we can get a tote or a drum of caustic soda, you know, and I can't get that thing to seal, we'll run that hose right down off the side of the car. And instead of letting it, you know, pressure up and leak here, if I open that valve, the path of least resistance is down to the tote of caustic, scrub it off, uh, and we kill the chlorine there. We react it off. Uh, we don't have any, any issue anymore, which makes life a whole lot easier for us. What other things can we do with this kit and all okay. these tools? Because there's a whole ton of tools. Yep. All right. So there's all kinds of stuff that we've got here. Maybe let's, let's do that for a little bit. So uh, you guys assembled a couple of uh, pipe fittings. So we've got your dedicated one inch stub out, which gets you into chlorine cars or a few of uh, the older SO2 cars, okay, to get your, your pressure on the car. You've got a two inch bushing. So that would let us then get into an LPG car or most of the SO2 cars to take a pressure. You're set up there. All of these caps that you see, this is actually the sealing portion on safety valves for LPG and anhydrous ammonia vinyl chloride cars. There's several different sizes. So you can actually disassemble those safety valves with the car under load and replace the cap because what typically happens is the O-rings get torn up. So mechanically the safety valve is an opening, uh, but the O-rings dry out or crack. Uh, and the car just leaks. So we go through the same steps to figure out what the pressure is, if the safety valve is opening or just malfunctioning. We can disassemble the car under load and pressure, put a new cap on, uh, and seal the car back up. Do Which would be preferred to putting the cap on it. But at this point, we fix the car versus you know capping it and erecting it. The safety valve can still work. Do we need to replace those O-rings on the same schedule as the, uh, the? Most likely. I think Midland will tell you that. Um, the likelihood if they're kept inside uh, in a nice environment like this that anything's going to happen to them is pretty slim to none, but O-rings are cheap. Uh, and you'll see each cap is labeled with the, the material construction on the O-rings. And Midland used to and probably still does, they actually take the O-rings on these and then they put them in with a little bit of uh, super glue or silicone so the O-ring doesn't try to get away from you. Uh, this wrench would be useful in uh, that uh, taking the safety valve apart. We have a pipe wrench in here so we can wrench those pieces in. We've got a couple of fittings so we can bush down. So that's one inch pipe which would let you go right into the, uh, the chlorine car as well. As long as you have the adapter to bush down to your, uh, your pressure gauge which you could do. Sometimes the flexible is nice because you can then bend it to you know, aim where you want to see it so you can be down at the ground. Bolt cutters in here to get the security seal off. Uh, we do have the additional plate that you can put in here um, underneath the jack screw. So if you put the kit on like this and it just seems like you're getting the leak off of one corner of the can, you know, it doesn't want to sit down right, you got your four long jack screws over here. They would assemble in each corner. Okay, and then this is basically sitting underneath, which then lets us push additional pressure on different corners of the can. Mm -hmm. That would have to go on. Yeah, yeah, it's got to go on. Like that. Butt can go on. Yeah, yeah, like that. So you can get out other portions. This is going to be all the way underneath, right? It's sitting on what this. Those screw into here. Yeah. But what, how does that sit and bite on here? To push into here. Did we, uh, yeah, we undid this, Jack. Can we, can we actually see it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just take it all apart and do it. Let's pull it off. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
fault because you're already putting pressure oh, on there. Pressure on here. Yeah. I see, I see, I got it. Mm -hmm. Letting you apply some more pressure. Yeah. yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> They would as long as you have them and you've got non sparking yeah, sockets non -spark, if you're yeah. in a collab atmosphere. Most of the time, you know, try to do everything we can to not have to work in a collab atmosphere. That's where the fan or the, or the water curtain or whatever comes in handy. Uh, where it comes in handiest is when damage. you're using the damage that, you know, it's an old car and the plate's pitted a little bit, or you're using the square can. Sometimes the square can doesn't like to put you know, the pressure down quite as evenly, so the little spider can come in handy there. Um, other cans in here that are unique, we don't have the LPG car here, um, but all the other cars except for chlorine and ammonia are going to have a, a sample line and a thermometer well sticking out up here too, uh, and both of those are subject to braking as well. So the way this would work is you need them both to spread the distance because they're basically going to be, so here's the camera, see like one would be here and one would be there. Uh, most times you have to take the valve handle off the car and that's what the recess here is to clear the stem that's still going to stick up. You'll set this down over top of both of those, only one of them is leaking, but you got to put the gaskets on both cans so you get the height right. And then same deal, you just build the strong back right over top of it and push down and it lets us seal those. Other than that, other than just basic hand tools, uh, that's essentially what the kit's going to do for you. The gear puller would be if we're uh, pulling the safety valve apart to get at it, uh, to replace the, the caps. Anything else? And that's not something we're going to be doing. No, and you know, we talked uh, Stefan and uh, Michelle. Michelle about the uh, you know how this one is actually going to play out. If you get a derailment or either carrier, the BNSF or the CN, and we know we have a, you know, or suspect that we have a leaky whatever the car is, okay, uh, unless I happen to be right around the corner, you're going to beat us there anyways. We know that, okay. So if you guys can get there and do some sort of an assessment, yes, this is the car based on we can see something coming out of it or metering confirms that's the car. Uh, if you can even get that far before we get there, it gets us a long way, okay? Um, so then you'll have the railroad hazmat person, could be me, could be Justin Piper from the BN, um, the new CP guy's name is escaping me, it'll come back. Um, be headed this way. Um, you get an ER contractor coming to help, depending on who the shipper is, if it's a Connexus car, which would be most of the chlorine, right, coming off the North Shore, their team is coming over, okay? So everybody's gonna be here. Uh, may see at this point if you know whatever i'm in calgary this is going on contractors coming over you guys are working with the contractor you may get to put the Mid midland kit on at that point uh if i'm here the er contractors here we'll probably use you guys for backup or an extra body up there you know we need another tech to hold something help us move things around it'll work that way um or you may be in a, a support function running decon and helping you know uh, deal with anybody that's got uh, complaints that i was exposed or whatever it may be um, that's normally how they play out. Most of the time we find it ends up being between the, uh, the ER contractor and the railroad hazmat representative end up doing this most of the time. Uh, but that said, we just had a chlorine car. It wasn't us, it was another railroad down the States. Um, fire department was out there, they had it identified, and they had the capping kit on before the guys got there. And it was sealed. It was excellent. Um, so it, you know, it could happen. And the more familiar you guys are with the tool, and they decide how they want to roll it out for you guys to have it. You know, it lets you handle a lot. So this kit will cap chlorine cars, some fittings on the SO2 cars because of the bigger valve. Um, most of the, I say most, the newer cars in the LPG, condensate, anhydrous ammonia, vinyl chloride fleet, this thing caps everything. So when we had talked about doing this versus the C kit, the C kit's a little simpler, but it only gets you chlorine cars. Uh, the Midland kit's got a few more moving parts, but you get basically everything that you can cap, you can do with this tool. And the one set of gaskets does them all? Uh, I still owe you the information on the gaskets there. Um, there's the EDPM and the Viton, I believe, are the two that come with it. Uh, and I gotta check. I'll get that for you here by the end of the week, which ones are which.
Okay. Uh, all else fails. I'll get you the information. Um, but all else fails, if you're looking for that in the field middle of the night, usually the easiest way to do that, you go to the compatibility guide for PPE and look at gloves. You look at which glove material is compatible with that will help because as you saw, Midland's not too forthcoming in which gasket is for which. They'll say that's the, the shipper's job and sometimes the, the shippers play uh, liability and don't want to talk about that either. So the glove has worked for me in the past. Same thing with gaskets on cars. Okay. All right, guys. All right. Well, thank you so much. Okay.